right, all right, all right. How you guys doing? How's everyone in here? I mean, hey, if you hear me, give me a thumbs up. Give me something. Let me know that you're here. Awesome, awesome. Good to hear that. Good to see that. Good to hear you. That is so awesome. Well, hey, listen, I know that you guys, um, and we got quite a bit of folks here. I know that you guys do uh, your you know, you do your deserving jar, you do your, you know, hey, and the deserving jars, if you do three presentations, if you recruit one person, if you also did a life app, or if you got a license, or if you did 10 prospects, if you did one of those things, you take a little sheet of paper and you put it into a deserving jar, okay? And in that jar, man, and if you don't do it that day, then you got to take it out, okay? When I first heard that, it blew my mind. I mean, we were at, I don't even remember uh, what contest or what trip we were on. And I know that Miguel went out there and he shared that on stage. And not only did it blow my mind, it blew everybody's mind. We said, wow, that you talk about accountability. You talk about holding yourself accountable. You talk about a reward and punishment uh, type of business. And this guy took it to the next level. All right, and we are just so fortunate that uh, Miguel is a great friend of ours. Every time he sees me, he calls me coach. And, uh, and man, from this point, I also have the honor to call him coach as well because this guy is doing it. As you all know, he just went over 800000 800000 in income. Guys, that's a big deal, would you agree? 800,000 is a big deal. 800,000, just kind of break it down for you guys, is 66,000 a month. That's what it is, 66,000 a month. Break that down on a weekly basis at 16,000 a month, uh, 16,000 a week. Break it down on a daily basis, divided by, that's $2,300 a day. All right, 23, there's a lot of folks out there that make $2,300 in a month. This guy's averaging that on a daily basis, which means that, hey, listen, if there's something he wants to buy and it's $10,000, he can look at the person straight in the eyes and say, 10,000, hey, give me five more days and I'll get it here. All right, I mean, buy cash. That's, that's, that's the impact that uh, income will do for you. All right, but we're so honored to have him on the call this morning uh, and, and call him a friend. He called me up the other day and we were just talking and all of, and I basically said, Hey, listen, I'm going to need your help, man. We got, uh, we're doing this zoom training, our boot camp in the morning. You know, one of these days I love for you to, he said, man, right now, come on, talk to me. Yeah, I'm ready to go. So that's the type of leader that he is. You know, when you give, when you give of yourself, you always get, you know, you always get it. And that's exactly what's happening to him. As he gives, he's getting, uh, he's getting a tremendous return, man. And I'm just so, so thankful that I call him in a, uh, one of our family's friend. I mean, he's there for us. We're there for him. And, uh, and we're going to learn a lot. So I highly encourage you guys uh, take some serious notes on this. This is one of the, this is one of those, uh, those big guys that are coming up through the channel. They come from Willie and Naranjo, Willie, Willie and Lorena Naranjo. Uh, direct to them. Willie just went over 2.1 million in income. Ain't that last month he went over last month he went over 2 million and now he's at 2.1. It's crazy what's happening in this business, okay? So we got to take advantage of it. We got to recognize where we're at. We got to recognize it all and we got to accept it and we got to run with it. We got to count those blessings and we just got to continue. We have not cuz we asked not. So we have to continue asking for this stuff. All right. So, uh, and, and I don't want to take uh, his time. And I basically just say, you know, hey, Miguel, just let it rip, you know, just share your heart, uh, hold us accountable, whatever it is, we can take it. All right. So, uh, guys, uh, without any further ado, I would like to present and bring to the table and bring to the, you know, the great Miguel Illich. Miguel, are you there? Are you in the house? Yes, sir, coach. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Good morning, guys. Um, it's, a, it's a pleasure being with you guys today. And I want to thank you also. I want to thank Eric and Jason. I want to I wanna thank everybody from the hierarchy because every time that I've been there, you've been taking me as a, as a friend, as family. And I'm doing this 
since I saw that you were doing it for us, I remember when you were going to our office and I was a new RVP. And actually I remember my first convention when I was a, a regional leader in the future and you were speaking from the stage. You and Yvonne were speaking from stage and you were telling that you were from the army before. And I was like, oh my God, everybody can do this. <laughs> Even from the army. So it's not a, it's not a scam. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know what? Those one of, those one of those um, uh, reality checks that tell you this is a real deal. This is a real deal. This guy from the army is doing it. This is real. So I was like, okay. So it gave me it gave me more credibility in when I was speaking. And so, guys, you're most of you doesn't know me. Maybe you know me from from I don't know from the company and the trips, but not from being at the office. But I've been at your office a couple of times. I've been to your office a couple of times. Um, I've been to Tampa a couple of times with Edward. Edward, I'm gonna kill you because that picture that he posted in that slide, you were it was supposed to to go out. We we're in a boat in Cartagena. You weren't supposed to share that thing, brother. What's going on with you? <laughs> so, <laughs> leadership, leadership skills. You never show up with a glass of anything on any picture. Never in your life. So, guys. I'm, I'm honest and open and everything that I say is just like it comes to my mind. I joined the business to get licensed and go work for Merrill Lynch. If you haven't ever heard of Merrill Lynch, it's the financial side of Bank of America, the investment side. My sister was working there and I wanted to go and get, I mean, I wanted to go and work with her and she was the one who brought me here. So before I, I share with you a little bit of my story, for those of you who doesn't know me, the jar has a, a I wasn't completely clear on the jar when I did it because people tell me, oh, I'm doing the jar, but it's not working. I was like, no, you're not doing it. No, no, yeah, Miguel, I've been doing the jar, but it, nothing happens. And yeah, you're not doing the jar. I'm pretty sure you're not doing the jar. Why? Because you not only have to take the paper out, you're not supposed to sleep at your house. Not that you go to sleep at your sister's house, that you don't, you don't sleep at all in a house. You have to stay outside. So you have to, in, in the jar, before I start with the idea, in the jar, you have to make it harder not to do it than to do it. Or actually, in everything in life, you, have, you wanna do something, you have to find, find a, like a punish and reward system that is harder not to do it than doing it. That way, you blow, you explode. Um, what I've been doing, for example, in the last um, three months, that my income went up a lot it's because I started doing the jar again. I started doing the jar myself. That was what happened. I was like, what, okay, what can I do to, to increase my income? Do the jar, bro. <laughs> you created that thing, you did it before, why don't you do it again? So I started doing the jar again. And on March, I did like, I don't know, like 10,000 personal. On um, April, 38,000 personal. May, 36,000 personal. And it's not that I'm closing like crazy on month end. I'm just closing something every day because I'm doing the jar. That's all. So in the, in the idea of the jar, before explaining you that, before explaining you everything that I'm gonna show you, is the whole idea is that you can, any one of you can carry 20 pounds a day. Can you? Raise your hand if you can carry 20 pounds in a day. From one place to another, right, you can. The next day, can you carry 20 pounds? Yes, you can. And the next day, can you carry 20 pounds? Yes, you can. And at the end of the week, can you carry 20 pounds on Sunday? Can you carry 20 pounds? Yes, you can. And actually, the more you do it, the lighter it becomes because you get stronger. So you can carry 20 pounds every day for 30 days. And at the end of the month, you carry, all, you carry 600 pounds. But can you carry 600 pounds in the last day of the month? No, you can't. Not even, not even Eric <laughs> can carry 600 pounds. So almost nobody can carry 600 pounds. But if you carry one day at a time, everything is easy, 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 easy. We you skip days, they say that your quota is 600 pounds a month, but you skip, you skip days. So now you have to start like maybe carrying 60 pounds in one day, and then you start like, oh my God, it's so hard. And then you miss a couple more days. And then the, the third day you have to carry another 60 pounds. You're like, oh my God, this is so hard. This primary thing is hard. That jar thing is so hard. It's not hard. 
it's easy if you do it like you're supposed to be doing on a, on, a on a daily basis. Daily basis is easy. So doing this business and anything that you want to do on a daily basis is very easy. Everything that you want to do on what, like, you know what happened? That most of us doesn't really understand how life works. We, you may be thinking, oh, this guy, this little guy is telling me how life works. I'm 60 years old, my little guy. Hey, most of the people, even if you're old, doesn't mean that you experience. Age doesn't mean experience. Age is just being older, that's it. But if you study life, if you study how everything works in nature, everything works day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, second by second. You grow your hair, you don't grow your hair on weekends. You don't grow your hair from Monday to Friday. You grow your hair every hour of the day. You grow a plant, a plant is growing. It's growing every hour of the day. A kid is growing, a baby is growing every minute, every hour of the day. They don't stop growing at five o'clock. They keep growing. So the things that we try to change nature laws and to adapt our life to those changes that are not nature, those are laws. If I'm in the 40, 43rd floor in my, in my building, if I jump out of a building, I'm gonna fall. And if Eric jumps, he's gonna fall. Edward jumps, he's gonna fall. Ed jumps, he's gonna fall. It's a law. So it's a law. So everything that anybody can do and the same result happens is a law. This is a law. If you put in the effort on this business, just one little paper a day or one recruit or one policy or one licensed agent, three presentations or 10 new numbers, you do one of those a day and it's a law that you get results. So this is not more, this is never going to be again a matter of chance that oh if i make it in prime america it's not if i make it it's when you make it when are you going to make it when you decide to apply the natural laws to your life and that becomes easy that's what happens that it goes easy if you do it like that you want to lose weight you want to lose weight you don't have to run 10 miles three times a week just run or walk two miles a day a day but you do it every day and little by little, but you're like, oh my God, I've been doing this for a week and nothing happens. Doing it for two weeks, do it for three weeks, do it for four weeks. And little by little, you get slimmer, 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 slimmer. It's easy. Everything is easy. But you know what happens? That most of us, we're not disciplined or consistent. Most of people, most people start something and they quit it like very soon. We don't get, for example, how many of you don't really, really, really read the, the manual on something that you bought? The instructions manual. Nobody reads it. Edward reads it. He says, I don't read it. Nobody reads it. We don't read anything. And actually, there is a manual of life. I'm not gonna preach here, but the Bible, if you, don't, if you didn't know, most of the life, not actually not most, all of the motivational and self-development books are based on the Bible, but you didn't know it. Maybe you didn't, maybe you didn't. Most of the people didn't know it. How I know it? I noticed it because I started going, I was reading a book and then he said, I based this book and this other book. So I read, read the other book and then he, I based this on things that I learned from this guy. So I started reading from the other guy and then he said, I based my, my books on the Bible. I was like, wow, well, on the Bible. And people don't say, really, I'm, I'm not saying that I'm reading the Bible every day. No, I'm not even reading the Bible. But I'm telling you that there is something that tells you how to live. I'm really reading. There's an instruction manual. And that instruction manual is telling you what to do every freaking day of your life. But you don't read the book, so you're crazy. You're like, oh, this is not working. Exactly, it's not working. I don't know how to, how to put a, 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 a furniture piece from Ikea. I don't know how to do it unless I look at that thing. And I hate it. I don't like it. I pay people to do that. Because I, I'm like, these screws, that is the small screws, goes here. You're like, what? Even reading it is confusing. Now imagine trying to do it, trying to do it without reading it. It's even harder. So the same thing applies for the business. And the same thing applies for everything that you want to do. Everything, everything is easy. Being outstanding in life, high performer in Prime America is easy. 
easy peasy. Easy. You know when it became easy? When I realized that I have you, I don't have to think about what is going to happen in the next month, what's going to happen at the end of the year, How, when I'm going to recruit 100 people. I don't have to think about that. I just need to think about, I'm going to recruit one today, or I'm going to close a policy today. I'm going to, you don't change or you don't build your life in one day, but don't stop putting, laying those bricks every day. And that is easy. That anybody can do. So when people tell me, oh, America is not for everybody. Yeah, it's not for everybody because most, most of the people doesn't know how to live their own lives. Most of the people doesn't really know how really run their lives. But if you run your life on a daily basis, primary case is easy, losing weight is easy, running a marathon is easy, having a marriage is easy, everything is easy on a daily basis. Okay? So I'm going to share with you um, my presentation from what I did in my, in, well, since I started. Okay. So I got recruited in 2014. I'm sorry. No, I got recruited in 2013. I was licensed in 2014. I don't know if you remember, I got recruited just to go and get licensed and then go work for Merrill Lynch. On, and that moment, I was doing real estate. I was doing real estate as a part-time, but at that part-time paid me more than my, my full-time, basically, because I sold a property. Now, uh, that's why I joined real estate to sell a property that my girlfriend had. And I got licensed in Primerica. In, and the day that I sold it, that was, we were closing the deal of her on the property. I realized that I didn't have anything to do after that. So I was thinking, okay, what else? I'm going to be doing what else can I do now? And I was like, okay, I got this license, the life insurance license. And I received a call. Like I think that, that was the, day, the same day of the closing. I say, Hey, this is for America home office. We're calling you to let you know that you have the U4 open. U4 is for presented the, 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 the series. I was like, okay, what is that? <laughs> the, the, the requisite prerequisite for the life, sorry, series six license. I was like, oh, okay. So what can I do? I say, when do you want to take it? And I, I saw everything getting close. I was like, when is, the, when is the closest day that I can take it? And they say eight days. I said, okay, put it for eight days. I started for eight days. I really started. I was starting waking up at 9, 5 a.m. in the morning, studying like till nine in the morning, nonstop. Reading, reading, studying on the iPad or doing questions all the time, all the time. And I got my license. Then I went to the office and I went to see Willie Naranjo. I was like, Willie, what can I do with this license? So that's the whole Naranjo hierarchy in 2014. That's the whole Naranjo hierarchy. If you pay attention, you can see William Naranjo laying against the door at the entrance. And he was making $300,000 a year that moment, $25,000 a month. Now he's making 10 times that a month. I mean, he was, he was making $25,000 a month. Now he's making $250,000 a month. And I was, that's me in the back, sitting there thinking, oh my God. This guy is taking advantage of all these people. They're all stupid. I'm the one who's not stupid. They're, gonna, they're not gonna take advantage of me. And then I was looking at my phone, I was like, what am I doing with my face, with my mouth? I was like, then I saw in a close up, I saw, and I'm like, and then I was like, what am I doing? I don't do that with my mouth. Why, why am I doing that? I was like, oh, now I remember. I had a hole in my motor and I didn't have money to fix it. I didn't have money to fix anything in that moment. You know, you know that that moment, $300 for me was a lot of money, a lot of money. So it's crazy how things like change in life. Then in those, in those meetings, I wanted to go to those meetings to learn what Mary Lynch could ask me on an interview. So seeing this process and seeing what William was making and seeing that my sister in, in Mary Lynch was making $70,000 while William was making $300,000, I was like, wow, but she, Mary Lynch is supposed to be cooler, but she's making 77000 and William is making 300000 in for America. And then I went to my sister, I was like, hey, um, so if I work with you and Mary Lynch, I'm, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna be making less than you, right? She said, of course, you're gonna be under me. Oh, okay. 
I was like, William makes $300,000 a year. And she said, you're the one who wants to come to Merrill Lynch? I'm like, okay. <laughs> so, so that was a little further in the story, but you know what happened? In, that, in those meetings one time, Omar Ropez, I was about to cross the, two mil, the million dollar mark. He was at, at my income level right now. <laughs> Crazy. And he said, I'm about to cross a million dollars. And if you do two by 2,500 or 2,000, your ad line is going to pay for your ticket to go to Atlanta. I want to take you to home office. We'll see if we're crossing the million dollars and we're going to have a show on PFN TV. And I want you to be there. He said to a, to a crowd. And I asked Willie, if I do two by 2,500, do you pay for my ticket? He said, yeah, I pay for your ticket. The next day, I recruited two people and close to politics. And I finished at two by 2,500. I said, coach, I did it. He said, amazing, keep going. <laughs> so that was the only thing I said. But I was thinking, okay, I, I got my ticket to, to Atlanta. I wasn't thinking about the home office. I was thinking about going to Atlanta since I've never been outside of Miami. But I tell you, I started of Florida. I started of Florida, never been outside of Florida at that moment. So we went to Atlanta and we went to this guy's house, Bowie Wilson. And I saw when we were driving to Atlanta to the home office, and I saw a massive structure set for America. I was like, oh my God, this is big, this is huge. It's a concrete building, huge building. Actually, the whole street set for America, the avenue, for America Parkway. I was like, Wow, I was so stupid. I was thinking, I want to go to these meetings to learn what they teach so I can go and do a, a, a good interview at Merrill Lynch because Merrill Lynch is a big company and I'm already licensed and hired in a big company. So at that moment, everything changed for me. Everything changed. The whole idea of America changed for me because I used to think that it was for America. I thought that was for America. That's not for America. That's a small office within for America. That's it. America has over 6,000 offices in the whole United States and Canada, but I didn't know that. I mean, you don't know it. Maybe you're thinking, it's, a, it's only Ed and Yvonne Ortiz office in the whole world. No, it's not. There's more. There's a big office in the headquarters in Atlanta. And that opened my eyes. And that, when I came back, everything started changing in the way that I was talking about America. So I was now a American. I was now a division leader in America. I was living at that house back then in Fort Lauderdale. And maybe you're saying, maybe it wasn't that bad. Look, I wasn't living in the whole house. I was renting the room in the corner because I didn't have money to pay for my rent. So my, now you're like, ooh, ooh, he was broke. Yeah, he was broke. And I was working here. I was working as a cashier in that restaurant. Not in a restaurant like that, in that exact, exact restaurant. And I remember one day, that was my position where you see those guys with the guy with the phone, his name is Luis, Antonio is next to him, and I used to be around there. And I remember my sister called me one time and said, hey, I'm going to introduce you to this guy. He was before I joined for America. She said, I'm going to introduce you to this guy. Uh, they're friends with me and they can get your license. I'm like, okay, they, what license? The investment license. Okay, cool. How much do they pay? And she said, no. They don't pay if you don't work. If you work, you get paid. If you don't work, you're going to get paid. I was like, oh, no. Are you crazy? Commissions? No. I want a salary, like $50,000 a year or something like that. And she said, look, stupid. Go get licensed, and then you come work with me at Merrill Lynch. Oh, okay. Okay, that sounds better. She said, okay, we're having lunch with that tomorrow. I was like, oh, no, no, no. I can't go tomorrow. She said, why not? Because I'm working. And she said, even if you have to quit that crappy job, you're coming tomorrow to the meeting. So I was like, okay. So I called in sick that day. You know why I was thinking not going to the meeting? on It was a Thursday. Because I was counting on the $20 tip, tip that I was going to make that day. Can you believe that? Can you believe that I was $20? I was deciding my future for $20. I didn't know. I didn't know. And at that moment, $20 seemed like a lot of money for one day. So I was thinking, if no, if I miss one day, I'm not going to make my $20 a day in tips. So I went to the meeting with $20. I had $20 in my pocket and I was, I was counting. $6 for parking, $14 for lunch. That's it. I went to a meeting at P.F. Chance. It's a restaurant in Brico. Right now, actually, next to my house. I parked the car outside where I saw the meter, where I could spend like $6. And I went inside, and then William and I started asking for food. 
Ah, uh, bring me Mongolian beef. Give, bring me shrimp. Bring me rice with this. Bring me lettuce and that and that and that. Ordering, I was like, who's gonna pay for that? I was thinking, fourteen dollars is gonna afford this. Not gonna afford this ever. But then I was thinking, okay, if something happens, my sister is here. She's the one with the credit cards. We'll pay something. <laughs> so then he did the presentation to me, and he said, yeah. So you pay ninety nine dollars for your background, twenty five dollars for your platform, and I was like, okay, how long do I have to wait to work with you? And he said, you don't have to work with me. I was like, what do you mean? He said, if you want to work, you work. If you don't want to work, you don't work. I was like, William, come on. Hey, William, can I live with the license? He said, yeah, you can live with the license. And then I was thinking, I didn't say it, but I was like, hey, brother, I'm from Colombia. Every freaking scam that you have here in the United States happened a year ago in Colombia. So I know everything. So I was like, why are you getting out of this? William, why are you getting, I pay 99 dollars, you pay 4,000 dollars, why are you getting out of this? I said, no, that's the way that America does their marketing. If people get licensed and they see how we make money here, most of them don't leave. I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> of course, I'm going to Merrill Lynch. Who's going to work for Prem America or, or Premedica, like I used to, to, to call it? Because I didn't know, I didn't know. I, I wrote it down, William Naranjo Premedica. So in that moment, I went back to the, to the I, was, I said, I was, I was gonna say, I went back to the office, but basically, yeah, I went back to the restaurant who was my office <laughs> the next day. And they say, hey, Miguel, why didn't you come yesterday? I said, oh, um, no, I had a meeting yesterday with a financial advisor and we're having to start a project. I'm gonna work with them and I'm projected to make $150,000 for, for next year. And he said, mm, do you have to pay? I was like, what? Do you have to pay? I was like, well, I have to pay for my background and my the platform to study. And they were like, <laughs> they're stupid, they're stupid. <laughs> I was like, why? He said, when, when, how are you ever going to work and you have to pay? You're stupid when you came to San Fresca, did you have to pay? They pay you, you don't pay them. Oh my God, he's gonna make $150,000. They got $125 from him yesterday. Anybody from the back was like, <laughs> The financial advisor. <laughs> and in that moment, I was like, oh, God, I lost my money. That's what I thought. The next day, I come back to the restaurant, and I used to come by the back door, and there were the cooks. So I came to the restaurant in the morning, and they're cutting me, and they look at me like, here it comes to me, Did you talk by April of a helicopter? <laughs> everybody laughing <laughs> and then I said I'm gonna leave this place one day I will show you one day I'm gonna leave this place and I said don't worry don't worry why he why don't worry everybody leaves and everybody comes back I left I came back he left he came back he left he came back when you leave you're gonna come back that's what I said and I said that's not gonna happen to me if I leave this place I'll ever ever come back and that became my goal in my head so why am, am I telling you this part? Because you can never ask for advice from the people that are at the same, level, the same level that you are or below. Never, never, because they don't know better than that. If they knew, they would be at another, another level, another place. They don't know. So don't listen to those people. If you want to get to a certain level in your life, you have to listen to the people that are already at that level. If, I, if you want to lose weight, are you gonna ask the chubby guy how to lose weight or the guy that is slim that lost weight? You ask the guy that lost weight. You wanna run a marathon? Do you wanna ask the guy that runs marathons or the guy that has ever worked in his life? You ask, you ask the guy that runs marathons. That's the same thing in this business. You wanna get results in the business? You wanna make money? You have to ask from people that makes money in the business. Don't, you don't ask your friends. So at that moment, I was listening to my friends and this is what, what was my results. That was my bank account in January of, January of 2015. That was my bank balance, minus $69. So you're thinking, oh my God, it's easy for Miguel because he's making $800,000 a year. Yeah, it, it wasn't easy when I was making nothing in my bank account. Maybe you're now, now studying this business, you're better off than I was in that moment. But you know what happened in that moment? When I saw that in my bank account, I was like, Oh God, I have to do something about this because my life can't continue going like this. 
this can keep on. No, no. when it's gonna change, it's not gonna change unless you change. Your life won't change by itself. You have to change it. Like your friends, you wanna have better friends with better income, better lifestyle, that you want to have the same results, you have to change your friends. You're like, oh, um, no. Me and my friend, we've been friends since we were little. You're complaining, right? Because there's no way that two people in the different families grow at the same level every time. No, most of the time, one grows, the other gets left behind. But it's not because of the injustice of life. It's because he decided to do something every day that doesn't take him to his goals. And you decided to do something different. So I was living in that place. I was sleeping in that room. And you're thinking, oh, he's, he was sleeping with his nephews. Yeah, but I wasn't sleeping in the big bed. I was sleeping in the small one at the top. My nephew was staying in the one at the bottom. And I remember when I got my diploma, my district leader diploma, and I went home, I was, sleep I was staying in my sister because I didn't have money then to, to even pay for, my, for, for the room that I was renting. So I moved back with my sister. And I put my diploma in the bedroom. I left. When I came back, the diploma wasn't there. So I was like, where is the diploma? And then like a half an hour later comes my nephew, 12 year old nephew. Uncle, this is the last time that you put your stuff there. This is my room, okay? So I was like, oh my God. God, please give me strength so I don't kill him. I was, by then, then I was thinking, why are you gonna kill him? You're the loser here. You're the one who's sleeping in his bed out on, on top of his bed. You're the one who's over 30 years old and he's staying at his room. And I was driving that car. I don't even want to tell you how that car was, but it was a piece of crap. I bought it from those places that you buy cheap cars. Yeah, I bought it from that place. That. It looks outside, it looks okay from the outside, but in the inside, the transmission was <laughs> crap. So when I went to Atlanta and I was with Boy Wilson, he told me, do you really think of Rich? I was like, no. He said, read it, it's a must. So I read that book since that guy told me. And from that book, I learned that people that really make things in life are those that are capable or they inoculate themselves from the sayings or opinions from their peers and they keep going on in spite of the bullying, on in spite of every adversity. Those are the ones that get statues everywhere in the United States and everywhere. So I was reading that, I was like, wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know a lot of things that I learned from that book. And then I read what to say when you talk to yourself and I changed completely the, the way that I used to talk to my, about myself. I never thought, I, you're not, never gonna see me or hear me saying anything negative about myself, never, never. Because it became already, it's already ingrained in myself. I, I can't say that I'm lazy or I, I'm not, I'm not. And I talk to me like that. But before, it was easier to say it. So I recommend you that book. And when I saw this from Hector Lamarck, I saw that that's Hector Lamarck, one of the biggest guys in the company. And I saw his income from 18,000, 35, 86, 400, 855,000. I was thinking, so Hector Lamarck, he didn't start making a lot of money. He made $18,000 in one year. So if I don't make $100,000 the first year, that doesn't mean that I'm a loser. It means that I might be like Hector Lamarck. So I bought his, his audio, his whole system, and I, I, I heard from him. I said, people are gonna start telling you that you're crazy, that you have to, you have to stop, stop and smell the roses, don't work too hard. And he said, and when they call you, they, they tell you that you're crazy. You're, you're in track to become a person like I am. That's what he said. And I remember one time in the morning, 6 a.m., I was doing my breakfast in my sister's house and she, she came in from the bedroom with one eye open, one other closed. She, she looked at me and I was like, Miguel Angel, you're listening to those things at this time in the morning? You're gonna end up crazy. And she left. I was like, oh God, I'm on track to become like that for la man. What's he say? He said that and it's happening. That gave me strength. That gave me belief. That gave me hope because I was listening to what he, he had to endure, endure in his life, in his career. And now that same thing was happening to me. So I said, okay, since everything that I read said that if you copy 
a person of success, you're going to have the same results that he has, even if you have to go through the same problems that he endures. So keep doing it. I was like, okay, I'm going to keep doing it. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. They're saying I'm crazy. They're saying that I'm too, that I work too hard. They say, they say, they're saying, they're saying. And in that moment, that was December of 2014. We have the Naranjo Hierarchy Annual Awards. And then Lorena was at the, giving the, 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 the awards. We were like 40 people. And I was sitting in the back. And she said, and the trainee of the year is Miguel English. So I was like, wow. Lorena is so, is so nice. She's, she's doing that so I don't feel like I'm a loser. They probably, they're going to give diplomas to everybody here today. So I, she was like, Mika, come, come. So I went there. I went there and I had the, the plaque here. I was like, Lore, what do you, what do you give me this? And she said, Mika, because you're the most coachable guy in the office. Anything that Willie and I tell you, you do. And I was like, yeah, coach, you're on your path. You're on your path to become an RVP this year. I was like, really? Am I going to become an RVP this year? She said, yeah, Mika, you're already on track to become an RVP. So I was like, oh, wow. Wow. And I was standing like this. And everything in my mind changed since that breath of hope that she gave me. She helped me believe that I was on my track. I wasn't on track of nothing. I was doing nothing. But she said, you're on track to become an RVP. And in that moment, I believed her. So one idea, one tip that I can give you, borrow the belief from your upline about your career. Use what he thinks you can do. For example, I was today in the morning talking to William Naranjo. I, I, spoke, I speak to him. We speak every day. And we were talking in the morning, early in the morning. And I said, congratulations, amazing month. I think your bonus next month is going to be like $90,000. $90, I was like, wow, $90,000 for bonus. Yeah, plus the income. You probably finish next month like $160,000, $170,000 in income. Oh, wow, coach. He's coach, I'm going to get to the million. I'm going to get, she said, yeah, you're going to get to the million. You lie, you lie, you're in the million. I said, yeah, coach. So we, and, and then he says, so we, we have to start thinking about the two millions already. If you keep doing the same things that you're doing now, you won't stop until convention. You need to make $166,000 a month. You get to two million. I was like, I haven't even got to one million. <laughs> and you're pushing me already to get to two million. But you have to listen to them. They're, they're thinking. You have to listen to your uplines. Their thinking is better than yours. Why? How do I know that? If your upline is making more money than you, his thinking is, his thinking is better than yours, period. That's it. I got, I got my, my William Lorena who showed me the way. You got Aaron Yvonne who shows you the way. And you have Aaron, Eric also and Brandon. They show you the way. You follow them. You follow the guys that have the results. It's very hard to follow somebody without results. I understand that. But if they have results, why not? Why not do the things that are telling you to do? And, and stop using your head and start using your upline's head. So that's when I started listening to Will and Lorena. First, they're more experienced. Second, your upline see things that you don't see. Third, they will tell you what you need to hear, not what you want. And fourth, if you listen and you follow the guidance, you do what they say. It's not only learning. Learning is 10%, 90% is action. Taking action on what you learn. You learn, you take action. For example, these meetings in the, in, during the, in, in the week, you learn, you take action. Action is 90% of the results. So, but if you listen and you take action, you're gonna have the same result that they have. And I'll show you that in a little bit. You will remember this. They told me, Willie Naranjo told me, Miguel, if you do the same things that I do, you're gonna have the same life that I have, the same lifestyle. I was like, really? Yes. Okay, you know what happened one day? Uh, I'm, gonna I'm gonna tell you that in a minute. What happens when I started listening to my upline? That was my bank balance four months later. Remember, minus 69, started listening to William Lorena, $9,000 in income. Isn't that amazing that in four months of started listening to my uplines, my life changed already in a crazy way. Because minus 69 to 9,000 is a big difference in your bank balance. And you think different and you feel different. So I started thinking, doing the things that they told me. Write down your goals. Write down your goals. I was, they were my goals for, for February of 2015. 
five thousand dollars cash flow in a month. A hundred codes by Yoon. I was thinking a hundred codes by Yoon, and I didn't have. I was only one person license in my field. I was me. I was thinking I'm gonna have a hundred license agent. I don't know how. They say that I don't need to know how. I just need to think on the goal and just keep working, and the whole will happen. It will materialize. So I encourage you to write down your goals. And I remember that picture. I was doing a, a review, a life insurance class review to the people that I have recruited. You know how many people I had in class? One. One people, I was doing the whole thing excited. I'm going to be millionaires. We're going to be rich. It's going to be amazing. And the guy was like, you say, who else is he talking about? I'm only here. Why are you yelling? Why are you yelling at me? He, he got licensed. Then he quit. And he's still texting me. He said, I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of you. That's, I'm like, yeah. I'm so proud that I kept going when you quit. So I'm, I'm so proud of me. I realized then, this is a check from $451 for two weeks of work at the restaurant. So when Ed said, some people make $2,300 a month, some people make $1,500 a month. And some people make $451 every two weeks. And that was me. And that's a commission in Primerica for one night of work. So when I saw that, I was like, this is two weeks. This is one night. I need to learn this and become good at this. That's the only thing that I need to do. And forget about being an employee ever again. Forget about that. It's never going to give me anything where I'm going to move forward in life. And what happened that through my decisions and the change of habits that I, I had, I changed my life. Would you like to make $100,000 a year? Do you know, coach, do you know, coach, uh, when you said that's $68,000 a month? I'm thinking, well, I've been making more than $68,000 for more than six months. So right now, it's over $100,000 a month. <laughs> $68,000 is a bad month. <laughs> it's a bad month. I'm, at this moment, I'm at $127,000. I'm going to finish the month at $140,000, $145,000. So it changed. It completely changed everything. And you know what? Since everything is closed, I'm not spending money. So I'm saving money like crazy because I want to be financially free. I want to be financially independent. I already have toys and everything. I'm going to show you that. And I want to be free. I don't want to depend on anybody that I don't want to have the risk that like R. William said, I don't want anybody putting their thumb on me. I don't want that. I want freedom. So when I ask you, you would like to, would you like to make $800,000 a year? Everybody says, I'm pretty sure they said, yes, 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 yes. Everybody says yes. And it, until I tell them what I did to make $100,000 a year, then I said, mm, that's too much. That's too much. Is it too much? Is it too much to do what I tell you to do? Or is it too much to live the rest of your life making the income that you're making right now? What is too much? So you decide you're too much. I decided my too much was this. I said, no, they saw. So no, they saw. I wanted to say, to pay attention to that. Look at that in my, in my picture, in my video. Look at the video. Look at my video. It says, no days off. I have it in my background because that's my motto. My car says no day so. Because, why? Because you build your life one day at a time. That thing, remember? Oh yeah, but uh, God took a day off when he worked on the week of developing the, the world, the universe. Mm -hmm. He created worlds, created, uh, oceans, mountains, volcanoes, people, animals, wells, everything. What have you created in the last six days to take a day off? <laughs> I went to work. And <laughs> you want a day off? You have to earn it. You want a great life? You have to earn it because everybody wants to have the life, but nobody wants to pay the price. And everybody has to pay a price. And what is the price that I, uh, the price that I decided to pay? I say, no, they saw. I'm not going to take off. No weekends, no holidays, no birthdays, no nothing until my dream is completed. First one. Second, parties on hold. No more parties. I'm not going to go out more parties. Why? Because I, one time I was in a meeting and Omar Opeza said, 
Do you know why Wilson Aranjo and Lorena makes more money than all of you combined? I was like, no, I don't know. And he said, okay, because William and Lorena on a Friday night I wor are working while you're all celebrating that you broke. I said, oh my God, he saw me. <laughs> you know why? Because on Fridays, I used to think that on Fridays we were to go out and get drunk, to drink, have some good times. Da, 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 da. And then I was like, Willie, how, how can you be working on a Friday night? He said, why not? He said, really? Everybody goes out on a Friday night. He says, he says, not everybody, because I don't go out on a Friday night. Go, I go out to work. I have a goal. He said, really? When do you drink then? He said, I don't drink. What? You don't drink? Are you okay? You don't drink? Everybody drinks. He said, no, not everybody drinks. I don't drink. He said, Miguel, did you come last Saturday to the training? I said, no way, Willie. I said, the training is at 8 a.m. in the morning. He said, exactly. You know why you didn't come on Friday on Saturday? He said, wait, because I went out on a Friday night. He said, exactly. You wasted your Friday night and you wasted your Saturday. I was like, yeah, but isn't that what everybody does? Yes, yes. He said, yeah, that's what everybody that is broke does. That people that wants to do something different with their lives, they don't follow the same pattern of the other people. And I'm one of those. If you want to have my life, you do the same thing that I do and you're going to have it. I was like, do I have to stop drinking to have your life? Do I have to? <laughs> and he said, well, you don't have to, but I recommend it. And then I had to balance and decide, okay, drinking or $100,000 a month. <laughs> I went for $100,000 a month. I stopped drinking. I stopped hanging out with people that didn't bring me anything good into my life. And who are you listening? Who's your coach? Who's your real, the real person that you listen to? You're going to become like the person that you listen to. Have you ever seen people with tattoos? They all hang out together. Have you seen people, the bodybuilders? They all hang out together. The Rasta guys or the, the punks, they all hang out together. The millionaires, they all hang out together. And the broke, they all hang out together. Which one do you want to belong to? It's your decision. It's your decision. Everything in your life is your decision. So, guys, this is what happened when I decided to do something. I decided to do, really do something with my life. And at that moment, I was working in a company selling LED lights. And I remember that one time I received nine calls within 15 minutes from the guy that I used to work for. And actually, he had a GPS on my phone, a GPS tracker, where he could see where, everywhere I was. So I remember when I had to deliver a policy, I have to run, park outside the office, leave the car on, and run with the policy throw it inside and come out running again because otherwise he would receive a call. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that place? And I remember Willie saying, why do you have to run? I said, Willie, you have a GPS tracker? Hated that. I hated that, but thank God that happened. Those are the blessings in these guys. That was a blessing in this guy. That guy making it work from eight in the morning to five o'clock and having to report to him all day, and having a GPS tracker. That was God working on my head, saying, how much can you take? How much and how much, how, lo how longer? How long? how he kept pressing and pressing and pressing until I said, no more, that's it, that's it, no more. And I remember one day, I said, no more. That was March 3rd of 2015. I said, I quit, and then I called Willie, Willie, I quit my job. I said, congratulations, champ. I said, no, Willie, 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 seriously, man, I need to work. I don't have anything else. I said, no worries. You're going to do the same thing that you did last month part-time, but now you're going to do it full-time. You are going to take it as a job. If you take it as a job, it will pay you more than you have ever get, got paid. Then I said, Willie, can we have a meeting? He said, yeah, you can have a meeting. In the afternoon, I got to went, went and meet with Willie. He said, Willie, what do I have to do every day? So I make sure that that doesn't happen to me, that I don't want to just, I don't want to go back to sell those things. What can I do to make this business work? He said, you need, a, you need tons of activity. What does that mean? <laughs> so, you need a lot of appointments. Okay. How many is a lot of appointments? He said, Miguel, at least three a day, three appointments a day, three appointments a day. And then I will work for me. He said, yes. He said, Willie, but what if I close a policy? He said, yeah, it counts. Does it cancel the activity? I said, yeah, it cancels the activity. Okay. 
Willie, really, what if I don't do extra appointments, but for example, let's say I recruit one person. He said, yeah, it counts as activity because you're growing the people in your team. Willie, really, since you speak a lot about licensing and people licensing your team, what if I get one of those licenses in one day? Does it count as activity? He said, yeah, it counts as activity. He said, okay, Willie. Really. So if I do one recruit or one policy or one licensed agent or three presentations, a day it counts as activity. He said, yes. If I do those, I can leave off of America. He said, if you do those, you're going to finish number one in the whole company. I was like, really? I'm not looking for number one in the whole company. You want to survive. He said, Miguel, nobody does that. He said, oh, are you really? What do you mean nobody does that? I see the people in the office. He said, you see them pretending to be working, but they're not working. I said, what do you mean they're not working? Miguel, the results show if they're working or not. What? They, they seem like they're working. Say, they seem busy, but they're not being productive. If you do that what you're saying, you're going to finish number one in the company. So my goal in that moment, I decided, I said, okay, I'm not looking about finishing number one in the company. I'm just looking to survive in this business. So surviving in this business means that I, wanna, I don't want to go back to sell lights. I'm going to do or one recruit or one policy or one license agent or three presentations. That was my goal. I added the 10 new numbers later for the people that say, I don't have a market. Mm -hmm. But you get 10 new numbers. So I decided to create a system called the deserving jar because I wanted to deserve the life that I wanted to live. Everything in your life, you have it because you deserve it. And the things that you don't have, you don't have them because you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it. You need to become a person who deserves. So in that moment, I decided I'm going to become a person who deserves. I'm going to do the activity so I deserve to be blessed. I heard one time, I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve that. I said, oh, how do you know what do you deserve? How do you know that you deserve that? Based on your activity, do you deserve to become a regional leader? Because I was a person saying, I deserve to be a regional leader already. So I, oh, really? Why? Because I have a lot of will. I really want it. I say, hey, 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 that's a, that's a word like that. You don't, you don't deserve a, an apple tree because you really want it. You deserve an apple tree because you planted the seed and you, take, you took care of that apple tree for years until it grew. So everything is about deserving. So what do you deserve? What you have is what you deserve. But we get misled in our, in when we hear, hear from people here and there. There's something called action and reaction. For every action, there is a reaction. So the reaction that you have are the results in your life based on what? On your actions. So in that moment, I couldn't have a system saying, if I don't put a paper in, I put a, I took a paper, I take a paper out. No, my friend, that was life and death. That was life and death. So in life and death, if I take a paper out, I don't sleep in a house. That was the only way that I could find that it would work with me, for me. Because I knew that if I took a paper out once, I was going to keep taking papers out because that, my brain will say, oh, it didn't, it didn't hurt that bad. In, tomorrow will be a better day. Tomorrow will be a better day. Tomorrow will be a better day. No. You put papers in and you never take papers out unless you take the paper out and you took yourself out of your house as well for one day. The paper is supposed to live in the jar as you're supposed to live in your house. But if you took the paper out from your house, you took you from your house out. Okay? So I did that for two and a half years. And what happened? I said, warning, never go home without results. Never go back home without a paper. I know that you love your bed. I know it. I know that you want to be cozy at home. And if it's cold, you want to be warm. I know because that happened to me. And that was the way that I found that I could do this without missing a day was to punish myself about not staying at home. Guess how many nights I slept out of, out of my home? None. So every day I started putting papers in my jar. So my business started growing like this. February, I started the jar. I did 16 by 17,000. $4,931. March, I was doing the jar for the second month. 
33 by 33,000. Nobody in the office has ever done 30 by 30, ever. They have, they have heard of people in other continents, maybe in the United States, doing this. But not in, not in our office. Not even in Florida, I saw anybody doing that. And I make 8,700. On April, 45 by 51. But you're thinking now, oh, that's not that big. It's not that big. Now, my friend, my little friend, because my little friend in 2015, nobody was doing that crap. No one. No one. But the good thing is that I didn't know that because I didn't know how to go on primary online. <laughs> so ignorance is a blessing sometimes. So at that moment, I meant 13,000. Then on May, 76 by 45,000. And he finished number one in the future, number one in North America, number one for the trip, number one for every, um, every, everything that you could see, you could see my face. Why? Because nobody was doing the things that Willie told me that I could do every day. Because nobody was that constant. What happened? Finished number one in the future. Then six months later, I got my ring. And another six months later, we did 100 by 100 with 64 license agents. So how many people do you need to do 60 to 100 by 100? You need five, it's not stupid people, but are dreamers who believe that they can do it. And I was one of them. It was only five of us really working to do 100 by 100. Like last, last month that crossed yesterday, it was really like five of us really working we had to be on every appointment and we did 172 recruits by 104,000 in premium. You don't really need an army of people to 100 by 100. You need five committed people that work the jar every day. This is what happened with my personal production in 2015. I did 99,000 personal production. Bayshop did 300,000. So for every app that I closed, my Bayshop closed three and I made $86,000. A uh, year later, my production went down to 63,000. So for, I mean, my basic production went up to 561,000. So for, on average, like from every app, I was closing six in my base shop. Personal one, six base shop. Two years later, my personal production went down even more to $26,000 in a year. My income went to 561,000. Because I, from every app that I was closing at that moment, my bishop was closing like 22. Every app that I closed, 22 here. One app, 22 here. One app, 22 here. What is that? What, is, what I'm trying to say there? The speed of the leader is the speed of the team. Your team is going to do whatever you do. But you always have to do, you have to be the example. You can't wait to tell them, oh, I did it already. You have to do it now. No, 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 no. You're gonna lose significance. First you do it, then you earn your coach title, like Ed just told us. So I moved to this place, Benda, where I was living, with my first commission, I bought, uh, I, I leased the uh, Volkswagen. The next day that I got it, I got hit in the back. <laughs> I drove it hit with, for, for one year, because for me it was more important to go on appointments than to try to fix the car. Then in 2016, when I crossed 100,000, I went and bought a, a, a BMW that I love. And you know where I parked it? Do you see that the windows are rolled down? Windows down, rooftop open, and I parked it in front of Santa Fresca. When they say, here comes the millionaire, so here comes the millionaire, punk. <laughs> here comes the millionaire, where's your car? <laughs> I still do that. <laughs> but I don't do it now for them, I do it for me. I just go there and park every time that I get a new car. I park it outside in front of the Santa Fresca sign and I take a picture. This is where I came from and this is where I am. Everything is possible everything. Then I moved to this sky rise in Miami that I wanted to live. I, I always liked it from the beginning since I arrived in Miami. And this picture is so important. If you take a, a, a look at the, at the date, it says November 10, 2014, Miami Beach Convention Center. That was the auto show that we, I went with Willie and Omar. They, told, they tell us, I'm going to the auto show. If you want to hang out with us, we're going to be there. So I went there and Willie said, do you like that car? He said, yeah. He said, okay, get inside and let's take a picture. I was like, no, it really, that's $154,000 car. He said, yeah, so what, get in the car. Really, that's, that's too much. He said, do you like the car, yes or no? Yes, get in the freaking car, visualization. Okay, so I got into the car and I was thinking, 
The stupid things that really makes me do. This is for America people. <laughs> and then I was the same car, but now it was parked in my office because I had just had, I had just bought it, brand new. So anything that you can imagine, you can achieve if you work at it. Then, okay, I switched to an M4 because I got tired of driving that thing. You know what happened? I bought that uh, G wagon. And I wasn't making enough money to have that car. <laughs> I think I was making like 250000 every time the payment came. I was like, you heard me. It was like $3,000 a month or twenty five. I don't know, $2,500 a month. Then I switched to an M4. It was cool, cheaper. And then Willie came to my office one time and said, uh, how long do you plan to drive that college car? That college kid car. You know what I, mean? I was like, Willie, that's not a college kid car. It's an M4. He said, it looks like the, all the other BMWs. It's just a college kid car. So what do you like? I said, well, oh, I, I really like a Mercedes-Benz AMG GTS. And he went online and said, there is one two miles away. I said, okay, I'm going to go see it. I went to see it. And when I came back, I came back with the car. <laughs> That's the picture that he took. He said, you said you were going to see it. I said, yeah, really, but I was there already. I'm not having the money. I just bought the car. So... Remember when I told you that you had to do that, what your outline tells you're gonna get the results of them? We went to a restaurant and when we came out, we saw our cars parked there and I was like, wow. He said, you see? He said, Willie, Willie said, those are our cars. I told you, you do the same things, you're gonna have the same results. So in that moment, I believed, I was like, he's right. I'm having the same result that he's having. But you're thinking, but you're not having a Ferrari. Hey, wait a minute, my friend. I had an accident on that car because I, somebody hit me on the wrong way. So I went, so I was driving, a, a, when I, they, they hit the car, it was a total loss. I rented a Camaro at a, yeah, rental car place. And the Camaro smelled like cigarettes. I hate that smell. I don't like smell. I don't like cigarettes. So I was driving, going to the office. I was like, why do I have to be taking, why do I have to take this? If I, I work, I make money, I know how to make money. Why do I have to drive this piece of crap? So I went out of the highway. I came back, I returned the car, and said, oh, your car is already fixed? He said, no, it's not already fixed, but I don't want that car anymore. I took an Uber car to the BMW store, and I went there. I said, what is the best car that you have here? I said, what are you looking for? He said, what is the best car that you have here? And they say, that one. So they put it at this one and said, okay, I want that one. I got that car. Then a couple of months later, I went and I got the car that I really wanted. I want a Lamborghini and how I still have it. I have it parked downstairs. I drive it once in a while. Well, I drive it like every two days, every three days. Then I did it again, like a month ago. I went to the BMW store, said, I want an SUV. I went there, what is the best car that you have here? They said, well, the best of said, yeah, it was the top of the line here. They said, that car, nobody has it here or in Florida. There's no more. There's only one right now. So what do you have it there? Why do you have it solid? It's just for show. He said, hey, it's not for show, it's for sale. He said, are you willing to pay for a car? I said, I'm willing to pay for a car right now. If you sell me the car, I'll take it right now. I took the car. <laughs> so everything has a price. Everything has a price. Then this happened. I went with Willie and we ordered each of us a Ferrari. He ordered his yellow convertible Ferrari and I ordered mine black, just like that. Black, but with a black uh, ceiling. And that was the best moment when we were at the Ferrari store here and we're sitting in the designer's table, like choosing the, the materials, the leather, everything, the steering wheel. And then I look at a guy through the window, he was taking pictures out from outside. And I was thinking, wow, that was me six years ago. I wouldn't go inside the store. I would take pictures from outside and I'm sitting here at the designer's table is choosing my Ferrari. This is my, the people that I'm proud of that are working with me, that are my friends. Those incomes are outdated. Mine is at 820, Diana is at 194, sorry, 394. Julie is like 225, Angie is at 210. And these guys are 145, 140, 125 and 105,000. Everybody, I'm proud of saying this. Every guy, every RVP in my hierarchy wears this ring. They all wear the ring. They all make over 100,000. So this is luck, it's not luck. If you remember, it's a system. Now we pay attention to everything that happens every day. 
we work like you guys that you meet every day. We meet like this. We used to meet like that face to face. Now we do it in Zoom. Through Zoom, we have all our meetings, one an hour a day because an hour a day, everything every day working, every day adding to your head. One hour of learning, the rest of the day for working, and then we start getting uh, different incomes and results for everybody. Uh, this is what I'm gonna last lastly show you is this. That was a picture that I took one time. That was my last apartment. I, I live in a better apartment right now, actually. I live in a, I, I have ocean view and the elevator just, just got to my apartment. It doesn't open anywhere else but my apartment. And I was in my bed watching a video from R. Williams from a convention. I think it was like 2013 convention, something like that. And I remember watching the same video from my nephew's bed in my sister's house, thinking, is it possible for me? What he's saying, is it possible for me? Then I'm looking at the same video with my Miami view, thinking it is, it is possible. So I wanted to leave you with this. Anything that you want to do in your life is possible. Maybe you think it is not because of the people that are surrounding you. Maybe the ideas that you have are wrong, but you spend enough time around the people that are doing it, you're gonna start believing the same things that they believe and you're gonna be able to do the same things that they do. So this business is not just for some people. This business is for everybody, but just some people decide to do the activity that I needed to do, to be done, to really accomplish goals in this business. Coach, I don't know if you have any questions for me, for, for me, um, if you, I'm man, okay. Miguel, hey, <laughs> man, I'm so proud of you, man, and I'm so thankful for you being on this call, man. I'm telling you, uh, thanks for sharing so much your story, man, and uh, every time I talk to you, I get to know a little bit more about you, man, but that is absolutely, absolutely what the team needed to hear, man, and I know that uh, a lot of the folks here are going to take that to heart, uh, especially where you were talking about the, uh, the deserving jar. All right. Uh, we already know that the name of this game is accountability, accountability, but you gotta be, you gotta be accountable to yourself. You gotta have the discipline to do that. And, um, and just from sometimes, you know, sometimes we talk to the team and all that, but when, when we bring someone like you and, and you share exactly what is it that you do and the consistency and all that, and, and look at the results, by the way, I said, you make 66,000 a month. I, I was at, that's if you average eight, 80, uh, 80,000 or 800,000 on a monthly. But, but last month, I mean, shoot, you already had a hundred, almost 130,000 yeah. this month, uh, probably more than that, you know, this, but that's insane. That's insane money, you know, insane money. So man. And, uh, and, and, and I know that, uh, uh, man, I, I, I truly, truly appreciate everything that you, you, you do for us. Okay. But the name of this game is, like you said, you got to write those goals down. You got to write those goals down. You're absolutely right. And uh, and, and, and we're going to be doing that, man. We're going to be doing that. One, one thing that I, I – let me kind of share. We closed out the month last night. Phenomenal month. I mean, we had uh, 343 recruits in our hierarchy. Oh, 343. Amazing. Yeah, on 160, 160,000. We used to put goals out there. You know, we're going to do 150 by 150. When we threw our goals higher, we said, no, no, let's go, let's go, let's go 300. Let's increase it. Let's double it, increase it. It's amazing how everything just comes together and your mind and your heart, everything starts working together. And last month we did through over 300. This month over 300. I know we're, we're our goal is to hit 500. Uh, we can go five, five, 500. We're looking at going 250,000. So we need everybody in this game. All right, everyone, and, and bringing you in and showing us that way, man. Coach, I, I sincerely appreciate that. But we need everyone in this game. Everyone who's on this uh, on this Zoom call right now, I hope you took uh, a lot of notes. I hope you, you felt like, man, if Miguel can do it, if Ed can do it, if uh, Edward can do it, if Jason, Jackie, Brian, Melinda, you know, Brendan, if we can do it, Everyone here needs to know, man, we could do it too. Our goal is basically just open up the doors and say, come on, guys, let's get this thing going. 
All right. And the great thing about our business, we only get paid if we help other people, yeah. which is phenomenal. You know, but our goal here, let me just challenge everyone here. This month of uh, June, this is the last month of the second quarter. Okay. We're starting, uh, and June is a phenomenal month. This is a month that, man, we could take advantage. So this is what I'm suggesting. If you got a team, you should always be shooting minimum. You got a double digit. You got a double digit on your team. You got a double digit. I mean, you got to do over 10 recruits. You got to do over 10,000. Some of you right now are saying, whoa, how can we do that? This is how you do it, man. This is how you do it. You got to go bottom line, bare minimum, non-negotiable. Non-negotiable here, you cannot end this this month with less than one by one. All right? If you're like, man, I didn't recruit anyone. I didn't do any premium or I recruited someone, but no premium or you know, I got premium, no recruit. No, no, no. Hey, listen, let's let's focus. Let's get this thing focused. Let's go one by one. You cannot end this month, okay? If you're a part-timer here, if you're going to do this part-time, what I mean part-time, you make a serious decision to go part-time because if you can make a decision to go part-time, eventually your part-time income, just like me yesterday, will overtake your full-time job. Uh -huh. huh? We'll take your full time. So part-time income here is to do one by one on a weekly basis. One by one on a weekly basis. If you do one by one on a weekly basis, you're doing four by four a month. All right. If you got others doing that with you, that's already in the double digit. That's the name of this game. Once you get that double digit going, that's when everything starts rolling from here. Okay. So you got to put that, but you got to hold yourself accountable. The easiest way to hold yourself accountable, do the deserving job. Do exactly what uh, Miguel just did, okay? Do the deserving job. Accountability is the name of the game. But we, all, we don't have a boss, guys. We are our own boss. We've got to hold ourselves accountable the way we hold ourselves accountable. You've got to put these systems to work for you. You've got to go out there and say, okay, well, hey, listen, this is what I've got to do. i got every day, every day. And you're absolutely right, man. We live, live the present, all right? Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow is another day. Live this present. The present right now is, man, my deserving jar. I got to get, you know, 10 presentations in. I got to get, you know, I, I got to do a uh, correction. I got to get 10 names in. I got to do three presentations. I got to do a life app or a license or a, or a recruit. If you do that, and then you put your name in that jar, man. You put your, you're holding yourself accountable. All right? Just like, in, you know, hey, yeah. Grass, you cannot see grass grow from, you got to let it grow and it grows just like your fingernails, okay? Your fingernails are always, and by the way, I got this from Miguel. Your fingernails are continuously, always growing. You just don't see it, but they grow. Mm -hmm. Everything grows, okay? That's a cycle of life. So we got to, you know, apply that. Don't be thinking about you're going to be going to be come in today and be an RVP tomorrow. It's a growth process in there. But during that growth process, you hold yourself accountable there. But, uh, man, all these notes, phenomenal. I mean, I just cannot I mean, I could go for days on these notes right here. But guys, we got to have a, a phenomenal, phenomenal month. And, by the way, let me open up because I, I took it away. Uh, see if any of the RVPs, if they have any question for Miguel. Any of the RVPs out there? All right. And I know you guys are going to not, not a question, but Miguel, man, appreciate your time, man. Thank you, Ron. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure, buddy. Congratulations on the 200,000, by the way. Feels yeah. better than 100,000, right? <laughs> way better, man. Way better. <laughs> 100,000 yeah. is not a lot of money when you make it. Yeah, yeah. No, and these guys, this is the goal on these guys is to get every single one of these RVPs to a quarter of a million by the end of this year. By the end of this year, we've got to be at a quarter million, every single one of the RVPs. Why? Because I need all my RVPs, all the RVPs, we need to be going to the senior leadership course, okay? That's when the company, and eventually we're going to go to 300,000 by the convention. I'm talking all the, I'm going to a million by the convention, but I need you guys to bring up your game. The only way we can bring it, we got to go grassroots. Grassroots is, let's take the youngest guy here and just show him the system system is the deserving jar okay you hit that deserving jar you do that day by day bam you're going to start doing you know your one by one on a weekly basis four by four on a monthly basis part time you start coming on board here full time and now you could do now you continue doing what you're doing and that's when your income just explodes just like you know uh, miguel did just like hector did just like willie did all that and it's all a process man all a process but just want to let you know we're all here for every single one of you 
And Miguel, we truly deserve, we truly, truly, truly appreciate everything you have done for us. And I know we're going to do some big things, man, and I just not can, can't wait to, uh, to see you personally. And thank you, man, and thank you for, for everything that you have done for us. So I thank, thank you, you so much. Okay? And with that, I thank pass it much. over to, uh, to Eric so we could close it out. Eric, you got it? Bye, guys. All right, Miguel. Appreciate it, bro. Thank you so much, Miguel. Hey, give it up for Miguel. Little clap, little do something. Come on, give it up for Miguel. Miguel! Thank you so much, Miguel. Thank you so much. Awesome job. Awesome job. All right, All guys. Right. So let's get this thing going, man. First of all, Coach, thank you so much for having Miguel on the call, man. Uh, that is awesome. You know, $800,000 in income, screaming towards a million. Uh, man, it, it is just awesome to be around such awesome people and such great leaders in the business. And to be coached by some as well, too, man. So, guys, man, June just started, man. Who are you, right, is determined this month, man. We got to finish this month off strong. It started off today, all right? So, man, let's get after it. Obviously, today at 12 o'clock, we have a, a broadcast from our, uh, our head coach, CEO, Glenn Williams. Man, he's going to be talking to us most likely about the next trip, all right? So, man, let's go. Let's get, let's get it going. Let's get it uh, – Let's get it uh, on fire, right? And then also, guys, just a heads up, this Thursday, uh, this Thursday, so not tomorrow, but the next day, all right, we have Jeff Seagrave, all right, who's going to be doing our training. Uh, if y'all don't know Jeff Seagrave, he is one of the top instructors in the whole company uh, t teaching us exactly what he's doing, you know, how to, how to get a new uh, recruit off to a fast start at the benefits of Primerica, right? And guys, these boot camps, right, real quick, man, these boot camps aren't for you to wake up in the morning, right? Get on it, you know, half asleep, right? These boot camps are, are, are ingredients that you can use to grow and become successful, not only in business, right? Not only in, 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 in Primerica, but in life as well, all right? You you deliver for your family every single day, right? Wouldn't it make sense to be the best person that you can be to deliver the most for your family every single day? Absolutely, all right? So these trainings, these morning meetings, right, is not for you, it's for the future you, all right? You gotta get better each and every day is your mentality, man. Have as many people on this call as possible, right? Should be your secondary focus. Your first focus is what am I gonna do today that's gonna get me better? All right. And that starts with these boot camps. All right. So you guys get on it every single day, work on your mentality, right? Thursday, we have some great training. Uh, and, and uh, man, let's get after it, man. Let's get after it. All right. With that being said, guys, I'm going to, we're going to go ahead and unmute everyone. All right, Joe, if you can go ahead and, uh, oh, I can do it right here. Perfect. You. Let's close it out, guys. Let's close it out. With that being said, believe in me or with don't, that being don't, said, don't, we don't are. Don't say that you need me. Yeah, <laughs> We are guys. I'm my best to make what I have valuable.